So I've got another from start to hopefully finish project today. It's this. These are the TTP223-BA6 and it is a touch sensor IC. We're gonna look at how we can implement this in a simple circuit so that I can design this into a board in the future. So this is the one that I bought on eBay, the TTP223-BA6. And uh, I got 10, whoa, that's like crazy. 10 for £1.40 and it was £1 delivered. Now, LCSC actually have the data sheet for this one. So you can obviously buy it from them too, or could do, I don't know if it's still there. Um, we've got operating voltage two to 5.5 volts, operating current at three volts, low power typical 1.5 microamps, maximum three microamps. I'm not worried about low power to be honest. Sensitivity can be adjusted by capacitance outside. Not sure what that means. Provides direct mode, what's that? Toggle mode by pad option. Q pin is the CMOS output. Auto calibration for life. At low power mode, the recalibration period is four seconds normally. Okay, I'm interested in the application circuit though. Oh look, there's our pin out. I haven't seen a way to figure out what pin one is yet, so. <laughs> That'll be interesting. Oh, here we go. Well, it's more of a functional diagram. Well, that all looks a bit complicated. Okay, here's the, okay, so direct mode and toggle mode. So I'm gonna assume that direct mode is when you press on that electrode, it turns on, and then when you release, it turns off, and toggle mode will be, as you might imagine, press to turn on, press to turn off. So it looks like we can set it up as well. We can put change active high or active low. That's interesting. So if we want to control a MOSFET, then that's important. And there it is. That's what I want to see. So we've got very little in the way of circuitry that's required. We've got one cap down here. I assume that's for stability of the power supply. And then this one over here next to the sense pad or the electrode, CS. The capacitance of CS can be used to adjust the sensitivity. The value of CS, use sm what? <laughs> Smaller values will be, be more sensitive. Now, I don't have a variable capacitor, but maybe that just means you can vary that value. But the value, the range of CS value is zero to 50 picofarad. Now I've got some 33 picofarad caps, which I use for crystal loading. So I'll use one of those and hopefully it'll be okay. Okay, what are we gonna use for a sense pad? We'll figure that out in a minute. These things sure are tiny. So let's see what we can do about getting an adapter board sorted out for this thing. So they are SOT 23, aren't they? One of those will do. I don't have a three pin adapter, so we'll have to make do with a four pin. Let's uh, bring you in a bit closer so you can actually see that. That looks like it will work. There might be a slight overlap with some of those pins, but the central two can go to the middle pin and the one on the outside can go to those ones, hopefully. Okay, let's try some hot air soldering. I was concerned that you wouldn't be able to see the pin one marking, but it looks like it is there. There's a big bar. It was actually illustrated in the data sheet, but I just didn't really believe it. But yeah, you can see a bar on that left-hand side of the IC. So someone gave me some advice, or a few people gave me some advice about using toothpicks with hot air soldering. So that's what we're gonna do. Now the idea is that you squeeze some of the solder paste out and then you use the toothpick to uh, put it into place. So we're gonna give that a go. So I just need somewhere to squeeze it onto. You can use a bit of this plastic that uh, these came in. 
that's more than enough. Hopefully, he says, not knowing really anything about hot air soldering. So we're going to solder it while it's on this board because it just makes it a bit easier. So pin one is here. That means that has to go that way around. OK, so let's just get a little bit of this on the pins. Don't need an awful lot. Well, that's a big blob, but I'll make it work. That should be enough. Tweezers. Got it barely makes it across that gap. I think I'm going to have to give this stuff a little push onto those legs. Oops, <laughs> great. Doing wonders, David. I'm going to go for 200 degrees. I don't know if that's going to be enough. I can't remember. <laughs> it's been too long. Looks like it will be enough. I'm going to have to get in there with these tweezers. Oops, it's very difficult to do this. I don't think that's enough heat, honestly. I think we're going to have to raise it. Oh, there's just not enough paste there. Mm, I think that's about as done as it's going to be. Well, I've cleaned it up. I mean, there's a bit of flux on there. Let's get rid of that. I could have done that better, but it looks OK. I mean, we, what we wanted was those outside pins to be on the very outside connection and the inside to be the two pins on the middle. And I think we've achieved that. So reasonably happy. I don't know why I chose to do it on that one on the inside, because it means I have to break these apart. Now we're going to need some pins to put this into a breadboard. So let's go with yellow. And then I need a breadboard. What's this one? Digital potentiometer, so we don't need that anymore. Not that I ever recorded a video about it. Four each. Come on now, Watts. There we go. So we've got that ready. Let's get, oh, we can leave the LED actually. Let's just get this, this uh, microcontroller out. It's really stuck in there. So now we've got it all together. Pin one is our output. So I think pin one is here. So we'll go with active high. Now we've got uh, ground is pin two. So that means power goes to pin three. Is it pin three? Pin two. So it's one of the two middle pins. Then our touch input is down here. So we'll just do that for now. Yeah. And then we need to sort the toggle and the active high low pins. So 
Well, let's just go and have a quick look at that truce table again. We can ground both those pins for now, actually, and we'll just see what the result is. Now, I haven't figured out what I want to use for a touch pin yet, but I did make these the other day, so I might just use one, one side of this um, and I can just plug it in and see if it works. All right, we'll plug it into the positive end. So there's our touch pin. Now, I'm not going to put a uh, capacitor on the adjustment just yet. We're going to see what happens when we power it up. So I'll pop my power supply on and put five volts in. Hopefully I don't destroy everything. We should see this LED come on down here. 3.2 volts. Let's try that. Well, the LED is on already. So is our sensitivity too high? Something did happen then. Oh, look how sensitive that is. So I don't even need to touch it. So we need to put a capacitor on there to limit that. So the capacitor will charge up instead. So those are 104s. These are, oh, we've got some 20 picofarad capacitors here. So let's use one of those. We also haven't put uh, a stabilizing capacitor on there. Well, this is in direct mode, so it's quite difficult to see, isn't it? But that works. Let's get that stability capacitor in. Just decoupling, isn't it? Yeah, I can't really get it. Oh, I can actually, because those are, those are going to ground. There we go. It's always a wire in the way. So this is direct mode. Let's change it to toggle mode. So if I switch this one to high, that should now be in toggle mode. That doesn't, that feels like it's still direct mode. Let's try changing the other one to high. So that's this one, isn't it? Ah, oh, maybe I just had that wrong. That's toggle mode. <laughs> it's kind of cool. So I can just use that as my touch. That's what happens if I get rid of that. Not a big enough area. Nice. All right, well, that just goes to show if you read the data sheet, you can make a circuit. No, that's not really the lesson from today. There's not really a lesson. Um, but you can pick up ICs like this and make a quick circuit. So this is the TTP223-BA6 and it's an interesting little IC. There are loads of these touch ICs around and these ones are pretty cheap. You can get them on LCSC too. Now, the interesting thing about this for me is that it's very low component count. Literally the chip and then a capacitor for changing the sensitivity, that's it. And then you can just have a copper area on your board. Now, I can see why this is useful and I know why I'm going to use it. I want to use an AT Tiny 85 for a project and I don't want to have to use two of its pins for touch sensing. Now there are some microcontrollers around at the moment that have touch sense built into its pins already. Um, there might even be some Arduino boards with that already. But it's an interesting little one. If you just wanted to make a board without a microcontroller then 
you've got that IC and you can use it. All right, I'll speak to you all soon.